Hello, we are the Drakes, and today we want to share with you just a little bit of our love story. Yes, because if you've seen any romantic comedies, you know they never work out as you plan. Okay, chapter one, love happens. When I met Heidi, we couldn't stop being together. We loved being in each other's presence. We quickly became best friends, and we dreamed of the day when we would live happily ever after. And I was definitely wooed by his... Uh strong, tight muscles. But I can clearly remember after having dated several guys, uh, our first big argument, and we just split, walked away, and said, that's it, whatever. And so I thought, well, another one bites the dust. But then three days later, he scaled, literally scaled the back of my three-story apartment and got into my apartment. Might have been a little stalking. I might have crossed <laughs> the lines there. But anyway, I thought- Do not, do not recommend this strategy. I thought, wow, okay, maybe this is how real relationships work. Like, you actually work through things. So, we continue on. Chapter two, love fades. One of Heidi's favorite jokes that I tell at every wedding is this. Marriage is like a phone call in the night. First you get the ring, and then you wake up. And it didn't take long to wake up. Yeah, that's very true. You know, uh, over time, as uh, you know, the days passed by and the kids started coming and the job got more demanding, we find ourselves just beginning to drift apart from each other. And, and instead of prioritizing each other's needs and really valuing each other's time, we just found ourselves occupied with other things. I called us functional partners because life was happening, the kids were getting fed, life was, you know, we were getting things done but there was no real connection. So all of a sudden we would find ourselves getting really short-tempered and snappy with each other if we were late. We you know, didn't do something we thought we were supposed to do. And um, quickly, yeah, we were just living together but not really relating together. Yeah, there wasn't oneness. We were just functionally operating. Chapter three, love interrupted. You know, as time went by and our hearts had drifted and communication was poor. We recognized that our marriage wasn't what we had dreamed or hoped for and we needed help. Yeah, on the outside, at this point in our story, we had three kids, life was going well, we had a couple different business ventures, but then all of a sudden, you know, our, the gym that we owned, it was kind of going south and all of a sudden I'm pregnant with a surprise blessing and, you know, things are getting thicker and thicker and um, so Drake is fully absorbed in work and he's gone a lot. I'm fully absorbed in the kids and trying to keep them alive and homeschooling and whatnot. And then little Judah, our fourth child, comes along and not soon after he was born and maybe because my hormones were high and so my threshold was low, I looked at Drake one night and I said, I'm done. And I, what I meant, not totally done on marriage, but I was, I honestly resigned myself to like, okay, we're just gonna have a functional marriage, go into that functional partnership. We're gonna get things done, but you know, there's not much love here. Now here's the crazy thing. If you ask me how our marriage was, I would say it was great. <laughs> things were going just perfect. But man, I totally missed it. We really needed help. And I was so thankful that night, it was after 11 p.m., he immediately walked to a neighbor's house that had been there you know, a few years down the road and had been like mentors. And he said, hey, we need some help. And around that time, we were also getting involved with the community group at our church, the couples class, and um, those were hugely life-changing and life-giving for us. Yeah. Chapter four, love fights. You know, indifference is the exact opposite of oneness. So what Heidi and I are learning right now with God's help is that relationships worth having are worth fighting for. Oh, what was that for? Well, I just wanted to share some of our tactics. So besides actual fighting, something that sometimes works for us is we have actually incorporated um, nightly prayer walks into, into our, our routine. After the kids are in bed, we take a few minutes to walk up and down our street and it's a good chance uh, to kind of debrief our day and pray and it has made a huge difference um, when I'm able to actually hear and find out what's going on in his life and in his heart uh, versus just getting frustrated by the things that maybe he's not living up to in my mind. Yep. So husband, this is also a very good addition to have <laughs> when you're you learning how to fight fair. 
Chapter five, love wins. We read a lot about love in the Bible, but it's not a theory, it's a person. In Romans chapter five, we see love personified in Jesus Christ and what he did for us at the cross, because it was there that his sacrificial love for us helped reconcile us so that we could be one with our heavenly father again. In other words, when we needed it the most and deserved it the least, that's exactly when Christ died for us. And I believe with all my heart that this is the kind of love that he's calling us to display in our marriages. And ultimately, you know, marriage is not just about making us happy and having a good time. It's about God's glory. And we are so grateful because of God's grace, because of the sacrifice Jesus made, that he gives us, the, he equips us for forgiveness in our own marriage and reconciliation. Um, so first with him and then with each other. And through Christ, we have the hope of oneness. That's right. So we believe the gospel to bring hope and healing to every marriage. Well, we're the Drakes, and that's a little bit of our love story. Thanks. Oh. <laughs>